Russian troops have entered Ukraine's second largest city of Kharkiv, where fighting is underway on the streets. Key points, the UN warns up to 5 million people may be displaced if the fighting escalates. The UN warns up to 5 million people may be displaced if the fighting escalates Ukrainian authorities say almost 200 people have been killed and more than 1,000 wounded in fighting. Ukrainian authorities say almost 200 people have been killed and more than 1,000 wounded in fighting President Volodymyr Zelensky's office says Russian forces have targeted a gas pipeline in Kharkiv. Ole Sinhubov, the head of the Kharkiv Regional Administration, said Ukrainian forces were fighting Russian troops in the city and asked civilians not to leave their homes. Russian troops approached Kharkiv, which is located about 20 kilometers south of the border with Russia, shortly after Moscow launched its invasion of Ukraine on Thursday. But until Sunday, they remained on the city's outskirts without trying to enter, while other military units rolled past, pressing Moscow's offensive deeper into Ukraine. Videos posted on Ukrainian media and social networks showed Russian vehicles moving across Kharkiv and a light vehicle burning on the street. A series of blasts were heard to the west of the capital Kiev center on Sunday, minutes after air raid sirens sounded, a correspondent said. Ukrainian media has reported explosions and a gunfight in a nearby town, including that a bridge has been blown up near the town of Bucha, west of Kiev. It was unclear whether it had been bombed by Russian troops or destroyed by the Ukrainian side. Anton Hereshchenko, an advisor to Ukraine's interior minister, said fighting was underway in Bucha against Russian forces that were trying to advance towards Kiev. People in Kiev are bunkering down wherever they can, with a hotel car park being used as a bomb shelter during an air raid alert. And huge explosions lit up the sky south of Kiev early on Sunday as people hunkered down in homes, underground garages, and subway stations in anticipation of a full-scale assault by Russian forces. Before dawn, flames rose into the sky from an oil depot near an air base in Vasilkiv, where there had been intense fighting, according to the town's mayor. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said his country was ready for peace talks with Russia, but he had declined to meet with Russian officials in Belarus. Mr. Zelensky said Minsk was complicit in the Russian invasion. The Kremlin said on Sunday that a Russian delegation, including military officials and diplomats, had arrived in the Belarusian city of Homol for talks with Ukrainian officials. But Mr. Zelensky made it clear that he did not accept Russia's location selection and named Warsaw, Bratislava, Istanbul, Budapest or Baku as alternative venues. Loading. Ukraine's health minister reported on Saturday that 198 people, including three children, had been killed and more than 1,000 wounded. It was unclear whether those figures included both military and civilian casualties. The president's office said there had been another explosion at the civilian Giuliani airport. Mr. Zelensky's office also said Russian forces blew up a gas pipeline in Kharkiv prompting the government to warn people to protect themselves from the smoke by covering their windows with damp cloths or gauze. Officials have urged residents to stay away from windows to avoid flying debris and bullets as Russia's troops close in on Kiev. Residents there have sought safety inside and underground, and the government has implemented a 39-hour curfew to keep people off the streets. M to mute, left and right arrows to seek, up and down arrows for volume. Watch 25 seconds 25 s the mayor of Vasilkiv says Russian missiles have hit in an oil terminal. Shelves are sparsely stocked at some grocery stores and pharmacies, and people are worried about how long food and medicine supplies may last. More than 150,000 Ukrainians have fled for Poland, Moldova and other neighboring countries and the United Nations has warned the number could grow to 5 million if the fighting escalates. Huge explosions lit up the early morning sky south of Kiev on Sunday and sporadic gunfire was heard across the capital. The mayor of Vasilkiv, about 40 kilometers south of the capital, said an oil depot there was hit. Meanwhile, the defense ministry said two enemy targets were shot down identifying them as a Russian Su-25 helicopter and a military bomber, 
near the separatist zone in the east. A Russian transport plane had also been knocked down near Vasilkiv, the ministry added on its official Facebook page. Mr. Zelensky has vowed his pro-Western country will not be bowed by Moscow. I am here. We will not lay down any weapons. We will defend our state because our weapons are our truth, Mr. Zelensky said. This is what I wanted to tell you. Glory to Ukraine. Ukraine says 200 Russian soldiers captured, thousands killed. As street fighting broke out Kiev, officials urged residents to take shelter. AP, Efrem Lukatsky. The fighting on the city's outskirts appears to suggest small Russian units are trying to clear a path for Moscow's main forces. Small groups of Russian troops were reported inside Kiev but Britain and the US said the bulk of the forces were 30 kilometers from the city's center. Russia has said its forces assaulting Ukraine from the north, east and south are focusing only on military targets, but bridges, schools and residential neighborhoods have been hit. Ukraine's health minister reported on Saturday that 198 people, including three children, had been killed and more than 1,000 others wounded during Europe's largest land war since World War II. It was unclear whether those figures included both military and civilian casualties. A missile struck a high-rise apartment building in Kiev's southwestern outskirts, near one of the city's two passenger airports, leaving a jagged hole of ravaged apartments over several floors. A rescue worker said six civilians were injured. Ukraine's ambassador to the US, Oksana Makarova, said troops in Kiev were fighting Russian sabotage groups. Ukrainian officials are gathering evidence of shelling of civilian buildings. AP, Efrem Lukatsky. Ukraine said about 200 Russian soldiers had been captured and 2,800 Russian soldiers had been killed without providing evidence. Moscow was yet to report on casualties. Ms. Markarova said Ukraine was gathering evidence of shelling of residential areas kindergartens and hospitals to submit to The Hague as possible crimes against humanity. Highways into Kiev from the east were dotted with checkpoints manned by Ukrainian troops and young men in civilian clothes carrying automatic rifles. Low-flying planes patrolled the skies, but it was unclear if they were Russian or Ukrainian. In addition to Kiev, the Russian assault appeared to focus on Ukraine's economically vital coastal areas from near the Black Sea's port of Odessa in the west to beyond the Azov seaport of Mariupol in the east. Ukrainian soldiers in Mariupol guarded bridges and blocked people from the shoreline amid concerns the Russian Navy could launch an assault from the sea. US, Germany sent military aid to Ukraine. Fighting has been seen across major cities, including the capital Kiev. It was the third day since Russian President Vladimir Putin unleashed a full-scale invasion that has sparked fears of a wider conflict in Europe. Mr. Putin has not disclosed his ultimate plans, but Western officials believe he is determined to overthrow Ukraine's government and replace it with a regime of his own, redrawing the map of Europe and reviving Moscow's Cold War-era influence. It is unclear how much territory Russian forces have seized or how much their advance has been stalled. Britain's Ministry of Defence said, the speed of the Russian advance has temporarily slowed likely as a result of acute logistical difficulties and strong Ukrainian resistance. A senior US defence official said more than half of the Russian combat power that was massed along Ukraine's borders had entered the country and Moscow had been forced to commit more fuel and support units inside Ukraine than originally anticipated. To aid Ukraine's ability to hold out, the US has pledged an additional 350 million US dollars, 484.35 million dollars in military assistance to Ukraine, including anti-tank weapons, body armor and small arms. Germany said it would send missiles and anti-tank weapons to the besieged country and would close its airspace to Russian planes. The US, EU and UK agreed to block selected Russian banks from the SWIFT global financial messaging system which moves money around more than 11,000 banks and other financial institutions worldwide, as part of a new round of sanctions aimed to impose a severe cost on Moscow for the invasion. Loading 
They also agreed to impose restrictions